and to challenge us as a church. We pray it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen, everybody. <clears throat> With all seriousness, though, I was joking earlier, you know, I knew all week, I had it on my mind all week about, you know, Christmas Eve and then less, you know, a day, a day later, uh, basically, um, we're back in church again. And uh, so I had, I had, you know, the, the thought in my mind as I'm preaching through Luke chapter 1 here for, um, <clears throat> for our Christmas series. And, but for several days, I looked at verses 39 through 45. And, I, you know, sometimes you may not understand this, but for a pastor, sometimes you look at a block of Scripture or a passage of Scripture. And you, you, you recognize it. You see the subject-verb agreement. You know what's going on. But you don't see a message in it to, to preach, you know. And so I was like all week long, I was like, you know, Lord, I don't know what you, what, I, I, I see it. I see Mary meeting Elizabeth, and I see some wonderful things, but um, what's the message? <laughs> and lo and behold, uh, this, this is no joke. I, um, I've learned over the years to be very trusting of the Lord in this process. And so I went to lay down in bed last night. Penny had our grandson, and they were sleeping on the sofa, and um, so I, I went to bed, and I was like, I laid down, and I was like, you know, Lord, and all of a sudden, boom, just like that, boom, it came to me, and so I'm, I'm getting my phone out on my notes and I'm putting it all down, you know, and this is what the Lord gave me, and I'm very excited to share this with you, so I've titled the message today, <clears throat> Miraculous Christmas Gifts, so we're in the series called Miraculous, and I want to talk about the three Christmas gifts we get at Christmas time because of Jesus, because of, you know, the whole thing that happened there, John the Baptist and, and Mary and Elizabeth. Three clear gifts that became clear to me late last night that I want to share with you today. I'm very excited about this. So, Take your Bible and stand with me one more time as we read Luke chapter 1, verse 39. Now, we pick up the story here um, as the angel spoke to Mary and told her everything that was going to happen. And then Mary came to that place in her heart in verse 38 where she goes, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her in verse 39. And at the time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home. Now remember Zechariah, um, Gabriel appeared to him to tell him about that he and Elizabeth were going to have a son, right, in their old age. And Zechariah had a moment of unbelief, and so he was stricken with the ability not to speak. So Mary goes here, Zechariah's home, and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby, underline the word baby if you like to uh, write in your Bibles, the word baby, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women. Notice, Elizabeth said to Mary, she didn't say, blessed are you above all women. She said, blessed are you among women. Never in Scripture does the Scripture elevate Mary above being a human, okay? But blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Elizabeth knew that the child that Mary was carrying was Jesus, was the Lord God Almighty. She knew it. So she goes, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Underline that word joy. Blessed is she who has believed 
Underline the word believe. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Father, thank you for your word and thank you for the understanding that you gave me last night to be able to bring a message to your people. May you encourage us, strengthen us, convict us, and may we walk out of here today closer to you and more determined to live for you than ever. And I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So you may be seated. <clears throat> so the series is titled Miraculous, and we've titled today the message Miraculous Christmas Gifts. Three miraculous Christmas gifts that I see right here in this passage. The first one is this. The gift of life. The gift of life. Now, I had you underline the word babe or baby. So just think about this. What an, what an amazing thing happened. So here you have Elizabeth. She's pregnant. She was a woman who was barren or, you know, she, they, she couldn't have any children. And God miraculously blessed her at this time to give her a son that would be named John the Baptist who would be the one who prepared the way for the Lord and when Jesus was ready for his public ministry John would decrease and back off the scene and Jesus would come to the forefront to lay out his ministry and and why he came uh, the life and works of Christ and then but but the hearts of the people would would have been prepared would have been the ground would have been plowed to receive the truth of who Jesus is and who he was. And so you have these two women. So you have one who's carrying John the Baptist. You have the other who was conceived miraculously by the Holy Spirit and implanted within her womb the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> they walk into the same room and John the Baptist in his mother's womb leaps and turns and Elizabeth could feel it. Let me ask you something. I, I'm not a mom and, you know, I don't care what they tell us today. No man could ever carry a baby. I saw a, a, a picture the other day of these two men who were supposedly married and one of them was pregnant. Uh, he, he, he's a chick, okay? All right, he's a girl. You know, he might have had facial hair or she might have had facial hair because took testosterone or whatever, but biologically, she's a woman, okay? So no man can have a baby. But, 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 but tell me about this. Ladies, you know when your baby moves, don't you? Right? Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Elizabeth knew, and she knew why, because later she says that the baby leapt for joy within her womb. John the Baptist recognized when Mary walked in the room that he was in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew it already. So here's the point I want to make about the gift of life. The word baby right here is the word, the Greek word, brephos, brephos. Here's what it means. It means an unborn child, A, B, a newborn child, or an older infant. In Luke 2, 12, Luke 16, Luke 18, 15, Acts 7, 19, and 2 Timothy 3, 15. So in other words, this Greek word, brephos, was used to describe a child in the womb, a newborn who had just been born. And the scripture also used that word brephos to talk about a toddler. In other words, the word brephos here talks about children at all stages of development. And so there is no distinction by God between a child in the womb and a two-year-old toddler. They're all humans. Beautifully created, according to Psalm 139, by God. In a marvelous way, by our amazing God. 
The Bible says about Jeremiah in the Old Testament, God said to Jeremiah, before you were conceived in the womb, I knew you. God even knows us before we are ever conceived. So we know that life begins at conception. And, you, and, 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 you know, I mean, it's Christmas, but see, abortion is not a political issue. It's a moral issue. And God views a child in the womb, no matter what age they are, no matter what the gestation is, God knows a child in the womb as a human being, as a child, because he makes no distinction between that child in the womb and that two-year-old. They're the same in his eyes. And so we see here the gift of life that God gave these two women. And we have the gift of life in Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life, right? Where was Jesus born? In Bethlehem, what does the word Bethlehem mean? What what does the town Bethlehem mean? What does that word mean? Bread of life. Or house of, I think it's house of bread. I believe that's what it means. House of bread. (laughs) So, So the point that I'm making is that Jesus is our life. And these two women were given this special gift, the gift of life. That's the greatest Christmas gift you can ever have, right? is the gift of salvation. And it's amazing, two people on Christmas Eve gain the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. It's the greatest Christmas gift they will ever have in their life. And so at Christmas time, when we look at this and we look at this story, we get these three gifts. The first one is the beautiful gift of life. Number two, we get the gift of joy. The gift of joy. Look at what the Bible says here in verse 44. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, my baby, the baby in my womb, leaped for joy. Leap for joy. I, I know this is gruesome to think about, but um, I forget the name of the movie, but it's the story of the life of Abby Johnson. Um, Anybody? Unplanned. Is that, is that the name of the movie, Unplanned? Abby Johnson was, she worked for Planned Parenthood and she was an a, a abortion provider. She rose to be the head of a clinic. And her life changed on the day that she went in to help with an abortion. And there's a reason why when abortion's being performed, that that there's not an ultrasound on the screen to see it, and why they don't want the mothers to see it. But for that procedure, for one reason or another, it was on the screen. And Abby helped, and she saw, and she saw the baby in excruciating pain. She saw the baby recoil when the suction tube came in. She saw the baby fight and struggle. The point that I want to make is this, is that babies in the womb feel pain. Babies in the womb have emotion. Babies in the womb can experience grief. Babies in the womb can experience joy, according to what the Bible says right here. And so at Christmas, Christmas means we get not only the gift of life, But in life, we get the gift of joy. And joy is different than happiness, right? We've talked about it many times over and over. Happiness is something that that, 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 that is fleeting. It comes and it goes, right? You know, I mean, Penny and I go fishing, and we go through unbelievable amounts of emotion. And I don't want to throw her under the bus, but it's true. And, 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 And same thing with me. I make a comment over everything when... When I'm fishing, if, if, I, if, you know, if, if I get just a little, little tug, I'm like, whoa, hell yeah, you know, I'm, I'm always talking. I'm always talking about, oh, this is a big one, oh, and on and on. Penny, on the other hand, she talks to the fish. Boy, she gets one, man, she, oh, yeah, I think it's a big one. And we get close, and it's a little one. She goes, dude, man, why you're little, man, why are you biting my bait, you know? 
she's talking to him. She, she's not having joy. But then when she catches a big one, whoo, man, she's like, get the net, Corey, get, and don't mess this up. Let's get this fish. And we get the fish. Go, oh, I got a big one. And joy, or, or happiness, I should say. Happiness just overflows. But the next second, she could be upset with the fish. <laughs> and that's happiness and, and sadness. And it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. But joy is something that stays. Joy is something. Listen, I know you're probably going to think I'm really a wimp. Well, you don't think that you know it. We've been preparing for a couple of years for our little chihuahua named Bambi to die. That is the toughest little dog. She got beat up one time by two pit bulls who bit her and threw her all over the place. She had seven holes in her. It looked like 22 bullets. It looked like she'd been shot with a 22 seven times. She survived. No surgery, no nothing. She survived. We cleaned the wounds and live or die, it's, it's, it's going to be up to you. And over time, she's had various things, but we knew. When I came back from Alabama a couple of weeks ago, she was, um, she was struggling to breathe really bad. And after a couple of days of experiencing that and seeing, we knew she had fluid on her lungs. So Monday, Monday I took her and um, we had her put down. I thought I was prepared for that. I've had people call me before and say, pray for us. We had to put our dog down. I'm like, it's a dog. Yeah, I didn't tell them that, but I'm like, okay, I'll pray for you. I'm like, Lord, please help them. It's a dog. Until it happens to you and your dog. They brought me the little box. I had a shoe box. Now, you might think I'm a wimp. I didn't want to go in while they put her down. I wanted to see her alive. And matter of fact, the nurse comes out, I guess that's what you call an assistant, whatever, a veterinarian assistant comes out, got a mask on, and he goes, Pastor Corey, we'll take, we'll, we'll take good care of her, we'll, and I'll hold her. And it was Ryan, young man who's been coming to our church. And I said, Ryan, I hope you don't think I'm a, I'm a bad guy, but I said, I'm going to give her a kiss, you take her. You bring her back to me in that box, I want that box taped up. I don't ever want to see her again. After that, he brought her to me. Oh, Pastor Corey, I'm so sorry. And I grabbed that box, and I could feel her warm little body through that thin cardboard box. I walked through the door to my truck, and as I'm walking to my truck, it hit me. Woo! I'm ugly crying. <laughs> and it's going on. And these two little kids are looking at me. And I'm, I'm sure they're wondering, Mama, what, what's that grown man crying for? I cried all the way from Archer. I was just, I couldn't see. I'd take my glasses off. I'm driving. I bury her. I think I'm going to be okay. I kept crying. I couldn't stop. The next day I woke up, and I'm like, she, she deserves more than that. I, so I put little bricks around the little grave, and I put some rocks on top of it, and I made her a cross, and I put Bambi, 2008 to 2021. Three days. Three days. I was sad. Three days. And let me tell you something I had deep in my heart, in spite of the emotion. I had deep joy in my heart because of what we had experienced with that dog, right? You know what I'm talking about if you've ever had a dog. I walk in the house every day and I talk to her. Dog understands English. She understands 90% of what I say. And even with a dog, I could tell the difference between happiness, sadness, and joy. Now, going way beyond that, to a loved one, you know what I'm talking about. The joy of knowing they belong to the Lord. The joy of knowing that they're no longer suffering. The joy of experiencing stuff. You know, I, I, I've just noticed this about myself. Now that I'm a grandfather, 
You know, at Christmas time, I just like to sit and watch my grandkids. I like to listen to them, see how they interact and watch. And it just, oh my gosh, just unbelievable joy. And I started thinking about this scripture, that God gives us joy deep within our hearts. Not only does he give us life, but he gives us joy. And it's deep. And this baby had it. But there's a third thing we get because of Christ. We get the gift of faith. The gift of faith. Look at what it says here in verse 45. So Mary was talking, I mean uh, Elizabeth was talking and she says, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Now, she was talking about Mary, but she could have turned that saying right on herself, right? Because she had believed the promise that God would give her a, a child, that, that she wouldn't be barren all of her life, and, and you know, you can only imagine that, how she lived all those years not being able to have a child and thought, well, maybe it's past my years, but somehow deep inside, Elizabeth was saying that about Mary, but maybe it was being said from her heart about herself too and it says about Mary that she believed blessed is she here's why she's blessed here's why she's so blessed by God because she believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her she believed now the thing you got to think about is they understood both of them what this meant for Mary and you know the story she was engaged. She was betrothed to Joseph. They had not consummated the marriage yet physically, but there's about a one-year period where they get engaged and they're legally married, but you know they haven't consummated that marriage yet. And so <clears throat> this was when Mary was pregnant. Can you imagine the societal backlash that Mary had to go through? And you can see it throughout Scripture. It's there. You know, when G after Jesus was born and when, they, when, when the cr crowds talked about Jesus, they said, there's Jesus, the son of Mary. In those days, you never used a mother's name. You would say, there's Jesus, the son of Joseph. But the reason the public used the word, the, the phrase, there's Jesus, son of Mary, they were reminding everybody that he's the illegitimate son of Mary. In the public's eyes, she had betrayed her marriage commitment and had gotten pregnant somehow from someone else. She lived with that stain on her life. She knew that when Gabriel came to her and gave her the announcement. She, she pondered all these things in her heart, the Bible says. She fully understood that this was going to be a hard road and that she might live her entire life never having people know what truly happened. But yet she still believed the promises that God has for her. So Christmas gift that God gives us is through Jesus is the gift of faith, to be able to believe and trust Him. People look at us today as Christians, and there are a lot of people that laugh at what we believe. Let them laugh today, but you keep believing. You and I keep believing, because one day the Bible says that our faith shall become what? Our faith will become sight. And we'll see it. The Bible says to keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Him. I can't physically see Jesus, but I can see who He is. I, can, I know who He is spiritually. And, and the one day, my eyes, my faith will see it. And it will become sight. One day. One day I'm going to see the lion lay down with the lamb. One day I'm going to see true peace on earth, on an, in a new heaven and a new earth. One day, we're going to see those who've gone on before us, our loved ones who have become Christians and 
uh, than who went on to be with the Lord. And we're going to see it. And the Bible says that God's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. Faith, in a way, is sort of mysterious. Putting your trust in the Lord Jesus, but at the same time, where does it come from? We don't sit around and meditate like, hum, 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 all day long trying to gin up faith. I believe it's a gift. Like the gift of salvation, and it's free. And it's been given to us because of what Christ did for us. So it's miraculous. It's a beautiful thing. I want to read to you what the word faith here. Pisteo, which is the Greek word, and here's what it means. It means to believe, to have faith, to trust in. Particularly to be firmly persuaded as to something. To believe. It has within it the idea of hope and certain expectation. Biblical faith. So we get three things. We get the gift of life, the gift of joy, and the gift of faith. Those are the three greatest gifts we can ever have at Christmas time, right? Those things. I hope you had joy this weekend. When you thought about Christ. I hope you had joy when you came to church Christmas Eve. Experienced a beautiful service. I hope you had joy when you saw the look on a family member's face. When you graciously gave them a gift. And it meant so much to them. I hope you had joy when you looked at your children or grandchildren. Or your loved ones. But I hope. That as you live the next few days, as you go into 2022, that your life is filled with faith. And whatever comes your way, you're going to trust Him. You're going to trust Him. Coach was saying something to me this morning, a saying of Vince Lombardi, that that, um, winning, Vince Lombardi used to say, is not... A sometimes thing, it's an always, all the time thing. Serving God is not a sometimes thing, it's, it's all the time. It's not just a Sunday thing, right? Being part of the body of Christ is not just a sometimes thing, it's an all the, all, all, all the time thing. And these gifts that God's given us, it's not just a sometimes thing. It's an all-the-time thing. And so, as we move from Christmas into the new year, you just think about that. Think about the gift that God's given you, the gift of life, spiritual life, new life. But the gift of life of of a human being, of babies. (laughs) Joy. To believe God, to have a certain, an expectation of certainty about what God's going to do one way or the other. In this life or in the next. No matter what happens in this life, we have faith in Him. Aren't you grateful for that, everybody? Aren't you grateful for the gifts of Christmas? Let's stand together, everybody, and we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to have an